Hey everybody, it's Heidi. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Um, so today's video is going to be the second in my arts and crafts show and tell series. Um, and in the first one I described it a, a little bit more in depth. Uh, but basically this is my kind of coloring adjacent is what I'm calling it. <laughs> um, art that I do and I just this is um, stuff that's too small to go in the portfolios uh, that I have for the larger items and so if there's in this kind of medium size I have this box right here that I got from Ikea uh, where I keep everything in and I just collect everything in here so um, if you haven't seen that first video I'll just say that in addition to coloring, I also do a lot of other arts and crafts, and I had this idea to go through um, all of, well, not all of it, but much of it, and just do some videos showing you what I've gotten up to. Um, so I'm gonna go through this stack of little creations and just tell you about them a little bit, and I hope that this is interesting to people. So, um, yeah. So if you want to watch this, I'll be, I'll be glad to have you. So anyway, starting on the top is just this little random thing. This is like, a, is that what they're called? Yeah. Spirograph. This is like the only one that's ever come out perfect for me because I always have, does anyone else have this experience? I just, can't seem to make them look good. Um, I'm always like going out of the little circle and it's like goopy or you know whatever all kinds of problems but anyway so I made this little perfect one and wanted to keep it because it was just so cute. So little spirograph These next two are watercolors, and these were just messing around with stencils. Um, this is watercolor paper, and it cut down into a smaller size, I think, unless I, I don't know, I don't remember, but um, yeah, so I just um, used a stencil, did the background first, and then went over, and then with the stencil, and then uh, went back with some other colors on top. I don't know if I need to lift these or not. Some of them I will for sure. This next is, this is just a little drawing that I did. Just a little abstract that I made up in my head. I don't know, that looks pretty pale. Hope you can see that. <clears throat> So this was with uh, just a very hard pencil on drawing paper, I guess. And this one is one that I did pretty recently, and this one was with oil pastel. Um, I've been playing around with oil pastels recently. Um, I got some new ones, and I was just seeing what I could do with them. So this is just, I don't know what kind of paper this is. I think it's just multi, multi, is that what they're called? Mixed media? Multimedia? Mixed media paper. Um, yeah, so oil pastel and then I fixed it actually with um, um, something that is not a traditional fixative, but it's something I use with my polymer clay. Uh, what is this? It's not going to come to me. Oh, any it's just I don't know remember the the name of the brand but it's polyurethane glaze poly is that right I think so polyurethane glaze but I discovered that it really fixes oil pastels well and then after I had done that I went back over on top with a little bit of acrylic paint just for a few clouds um, because <clears throat> it was lacking a little something. So this is just, you know, 
messing around. I often do these landscapes if I'm just trying things out. It's, I don't know, it's one of my favorite things to do is just these little abstract landscapes. Most of them not really using a reference photo or anything. This was also um, oil pastel and <clears throat> I think this was a gessoed sheet of mixed media paper. And then I went over it with gold, golden satin glazing liquid to fix it, um, but it kind of smeared a little bit and got these streaks and little specks of dirt and dust. I don't know if you can see that, but so that, um, that method didn't really work so well for me. And then this one, I don't know which way this goes. <laughs> I don't really have a, a way, but this is oil pastel as well. Um, I think this was mostly Mungyo Gallery, if I remember <clears throat> correctly. Um, so oil pastel, and then I fixed it with Spectrafix. And if you turn it the right way, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you, but uh, there are little spots all over it where the Spectrafix you know, got little droplets all over. Um, so I didn't like that. And then uh, after that was dried, I went over with paint pens. I don't know, I was just messing around. Um, and it kind of looks like a map. Like it. And this one. Maybe I should move these out of the way. No, I don't like that. Okay, let's keep them here. <laughs> Uh, this one is, I don't remember what paper this is. I think it might be just watercolor paper, but I was just messing around with acrylics. And actually it goes this way. Um, did this little abstract with acrylic paint. And this one is a watercolor. I don't know which way I like it best. I think this way. Um, I just drew these random little, uh, connect the dots shapes, basically is what it is. And then went back in with watercolor and that is pretty much all it is, but I like it. It's fun. That was a fun technique too. This one is really weird. I don't know what, what this is. This is just a printout of some sort of a tessellation pattern. I have no idea where I got it. Um, and I think this was just done with colored pencils, but it was a long time before I started coloring for real. So I liked it and I just kept it for some reason. Oh, yeah, I didn't want to throw it away. This one is a watercolor. Um, I think, and this is uh, watercolor paper, not cotton, cotton, but um, just regular paper, watercolor paper. And I had just gotten some Cotman watercolors in the tubes, and I was trying them out. And I think this in the center is something different. I don't remember anymore. This was from several years ago. This one is watercolor pencils on watercolor paper um, and then I went over it to break down the pigments with um, the non-toxic, oh what is it called? Um, oh, of course I'm not going to be able to remember what it's called. But I'll put it on the screen if I remember later. Uh, so anyway, it soaked through, which is not a big deal. And then I think I just, um, the sky I just did with water. So that's watercolor pencil and water, I think. This one is watercolor pencil, just, um, 
diluted with water. Maybe I don't remember if I used a water brush or a regular brush or what I did. Just a simple landscape messing around probably. This was just, I don't know what this was. I was just using some new watercolors that I got. Um, so I just made this little pattern um, up to a certain point and then I stopped and then some of it is done with marker, um, I think. Or, no, that's not alcohol marker. I don't know what that was. Maybe it's paint, paint pen, I'm not sure. And this is one I did recently. This is, it goes like that. Um, so this is watercolor paper, watercolor background, and then I went over everything after it dried using paint markers and paint pens, you know, Posca, gold, I don't know, a variety of different kinds, I think. Um, but yeah, I really like doing these kind of abstract. Oh, and I also, also used um, color pencil, if you can see. Just playing around with my style, actually. Trying to, I don't know, I've, I feel like I've always been playing around with my style. I don't really have a style, I just mess around. <laughs> Basically, that's what I do. Um, this is actually not my own design. This is a tracing of um, a moth from, oh, what is her name? Her book says like Rachel Reinert. Rachel Reinert moth. And then I um, used, this is watercolor paper. Um, I used uh, Bic flares to go in it back in and with water to color it, which worked out so well. I really love how that worked out. So technically not my own design, but it's in this box. <laughs> so I'll show it to you. And this one is just a, a little, a little flower that I drew and I think I used watercolors and then went over it with a micron pen or something. And I think some of these I've already shown in, in different um, updates, coloring updates. This is a little mandala that I drew on watercolor paper. And then I went back over with marker and um, I diluted it with water. And yeah, I think I used micron pen and then went over it later with the, the color. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. This one was an experiment. Um, this is, I don't think this, well actually, yeah, I think this was watercolor paper too. Um, I just traced this design from a coloring book and I was experimenting with um, glycerin and, uh, glycerin and water-based markers, I think it was. And then this purple is alcohol marker that I did later. But these outside areas here, if you can see all the cool color blending that's going on, that is glycerin and water-based marker. So that worked out really nicely. So I should maybe try to use that technique again. Then I use some gold paint pen just to go over, make these little dots all over. If you can see that kind of shining. And then this one is just a little doodle, little drawing that I did years ago. Um, I drew it in pencil and then I went back with colored pencil and colored it. And the next couple are, I don't know why I did these. At one time I was inspired by something or other to try and create my own little characters. I don't know if you can see how well you can see these. I hope you can see them. Um, just these little characters that I came up with. Cute little guys and I love these. I haven't used them for anything, you know, I haven't like 
try to draw them again or I don't know maybe I should but I'm not very good at drawing I don't I don't know I have issues with realism and this isn't even realistic but it's, you know what I mean um, I'm much more comfortable with abstract stuff <laughs> This is actually not, this is just a coloring that I did um, one time that was unfinished. It was like in a, a group coloring session on a vacation that I went on, but I didn't want to throw it out, so I just kept it. Uh, this one is um, not my own design. It's a tracing of um, a pattern from a book that I have, and then I went over it with... Um, color pencil. This is on color pencil paper, I think. And this one is just this little doodle that I did years ago, and it's not anything fancy or special, but I, you know, I didn't want to throw it out. I, I liked it well enough to keep, so just threw it in this box. And this one is um, just this I don't know what it was, just a, you know, like I drew these squiggly lines all over and then doodled on top, like these little characters, there's a little bunny, there's this little guy, there's this little insect here, and there's another insect there, and this was a lot of fun. I should maybe try to expand this, it's kind of what I end up doing if I'm doing this kind of style, I end up like creating these little characters like that. Maybe that's where I got the idea from my little characters. It could be. This one is some kind of random doodle. I think I got a, a pen that was like a calligraphy pen um, with a tip that made these lines like that. And I just did this doodle and colored it in. And, oh, another one just like that, like, just random stuff, but I, didn't, I liked it well enough to keep. Um, and this one so it sort of harks back to those other ones that it, um, I showed you in the first video, the larger size uh, doodles that I used to do with little dots, like way back when. Um, maybe I'll lift it up a little bit so you can see. And I think this was with gel pen. With Jelly Roll Metallics, if I remember correctly. Just some goofy little... <laughs> goofy little doodles. Um, another little mandala that I just drew. And, uh, I think this is marker paper. And... This one is uh, really recent, within the last month, I'd say. Um, this is on mixed media paper. I used stress inks in the background and then sprinkled on some water to get some of this effect. I don't know if you can really see. Um, and then um, went over with, I think it was a Sharpie, Ultrafine Sharpies, and just made this pattern and you know just doodling again trying to find my visual style or something um this is one that i did e years ago just this like random off the cuff doodle that makes no sense at all it's just a bunch of weirdness but again i didn't want to throw it out i liked it well enough to keep uh, this one is on watercolor paper. This is, um, I was trying out some techniques in watercolor. Um, this is with salt. Um, just sprinkling salt onto your page when the watercolor is still really wet. And it creates this really cool effect. And I thought it looked like snow, like a snowy sky. So I did this um, landscape. Or maybe I set out to make this, this I don't remember, this was so long ago how, what my thinking was, but um, 
so I made these hills and then in watercolor and then I went back over with um, a gel pen to create this like snow so it's kind of like maybe a snowy night in in some kind of a desert landscape or Eastern Oregon maybe I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it is this one is on watercolor paper. This was, I remember this was um, following um, a YouTube video of a watercolorist. Um, she did a tutorial on just um, doing watercolor planets and also little landscapes like that. So that was a lot of fun. And this one is also watercolor paper. This was the same kind of concept as um, another one that I showed, I think, uh, I think that was the first video um, where I just blocked out some shapes and then doodled in the shapes and then went back with watercolor and colored everything in and really loved doing this actually see this is where i come up with these little characters and things there's this little cactus guy there's this little alien in the spacecraft really like this a little house tree so i'm gonna have to come back to this i think that was i think it was super fun and creative um this one was on watercolor paper also, and this was just uh, my sort of terrible attempt at realism. Um, I just picked up a leaf and it was in the fall and just drew this with, I don't know, I think I just drew it with uh, fine liners or something. Don't remember what pens I used, um, but I think the background, I think this is Tombow's. I don't often draw realism. I think I mentioned that. <laughs> uh, this one, this goofy little one, is just Tombos, just messing around. I think I was also testing out how Tombos would do on watercolor paper. So I made these little characters. This one is um, just a doodle on watercolor paper using markers. I don't remember. I think it was just a variety of different markers. Just, I don't know, these weird organic shapes. This one was uh, following a YouTube video. Uh, this is watercolor. And I think this one was like, you know, where you just make random blobs of of watercolor and then go back over and draw whatever you see. So that's what I did here. Nothing too spectacular, but I liked it well enough to keep it. And this one, this is marker. I think it's Tombow's or it could be Pentel's, I'm not sure, but on watercolor paper and I was just messing around. I have no idea where this idea came from, you know, just entered my head and this is how it came out, but I kind of like it. Little birds. Another doodle from years ago, maybe eight or seven years ago, something like that. I don't know. I don't know which way this goes either. Another doodle. It's kind of evolved from my original style. Another one like that. And doodle just using this kind of hatch mark kind of style. I like it. I like this doing this a lot. This one is a watercolor um, 
where I just used watercolor wash and just like made kind of scribbles, like these circles all over and blobs. And then when it was dry, I went back over everything with a fine liner and outlined, outlined everything, which is one of my favorite things to do. And this one is the same thing, except I think this one did, wasn't really very nice as a, the, as a, you know, or the original page. The, something about it didn't make me happy. So I decided to try cutting it up into smaller pieces and rearranging them and gluing them onto another sheet of paper. And I liked it much better that way. I think it makes it a lot more interesting. So that's a good thing to do if you make something that you don't like. If just instead of getting rid of it, maybe try cutting it up and rearranging it. And this is just this little, I don't know where I got that from a book, I think. I think I was going through a, going through something. So this was what came out um, and I didn't want to get rid of it. Just a bunch of little doodles again, nothing fancy, it's very, very small, kind of a zen doodly kind of thing. Um, and this one was from a notebook that I was just messing around creating this little pattern um, and then I liked it enough to keep, so I cut it out, the notebook. This one was on marker paper. I was trying out the marker paper. Um, and yeah, so I think these are, I don't remember what markers I was using, but they're alcohol markers. Just using this kind of stippling method. And I just made this little design with flowers and leaves. I don't know where I got that idea. And then this last one is a recent one, and this was done with pan pastels on, what paper was this? I think this is a colored pencil paper, actually. And I was just um, kind of just experimenting, really, with pan pastels. I bought a, a seascape set of them, so a lot of blues and greens and grays. And so I, that's what I used on this one. And then I fixed it with, I think I fixed it with Spectrafix and I can still see the little spots that it leaves. So I don't like that. So that led to a search for a better fixative, which I think I have found in Hairspray. So yeah, that is the last one in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, thanks so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way through. Wow, that's dedication. <laughs> um, hope you liked and um, let me know what you think. Uh, any comments on anything are always appreciated and I will see you in the next one. Bye.